What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar with Cesar Gets Crypto, and we are talking about a few different things, maybe maybe four different things, actually, tonight, um, paired with other different things. We're going to be talking about Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Bitcoin itself, but we're also going to be talking about the Grayscale Trusts that correspond with those, so LTCN, BCHG, ETHE, and GBTC. Um, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things. This one comes to us at the request of a bunch of different people. I'm going to name them off right now because I think all of you guys deserve a little shout out. Uh, first and foremost, Curious Sloth. We've got Red Richard V. Uh, user GW. Uh, the Current Thing Guy. Mr. M Hat. And Miami Futures Trader as well. All of you have requested this. If I left anybody out, I'm sorry. Um, it was a lot to like kind of get all this configured how I want to do it. I, I was going to make individual videos for each one, but I, I figure, you know what? They're all cryptos. We're going to be talking about the uh, the Grayscale Trust in comparison to that. And we're, we're going to do a little bit different things too with Bitcoin Cash and GBTC, but uh, at the request of Mr. M Hat. But I, I feel like it all, it all coincides. So uh, stick around. We're going to be going over a lot of things. I will leave timestamps in the description if you want to breeze through and click to which one you want to go to. If not, I will be doing it in the order of Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and then BTC. Of course, after I talk about the initial crypto, I will be talking about the uh, the Grayscale Trust as well. So that's the order that I'm going to do it in. If you like the video so far, hit the like button. If you're if you're not sure if you like it, just stick to the end. You'll hit that like button, I'm sure. Subscribe if you want to see more content, and let's get into this stuff right now, man. Um, looking at this here, on the weekly for Litecoin, we are above the 50. We are above the 50 so far. You know, we still have the rest of the week to close out. We could, if we were to close this week red, which we're only up right now 1.6%, if we were to close this week red, it actually would look like we have a bit of a rejection off of the 50 level, along with this like lower high, lower low trend. We could see something like that where we do go inevitably to the oversold zone. Where would that take us for price? Um, you know, I don't know if it would take us below this low. It could. It absolutely could, but maybe it would take us down. We're at seventy-three and a half dollars right now. Maybe it would take us down to about sixty-three dollars, something like that. Um, with the possibility that we absolutely could go down to like fifty-three dollars, maybe even forty-eight dollars. As I've been saying this whole time, even till now, I don't think we're going to break this low. It is possible we could break this low, but let's, let's look more at the more uh, immediate term time frames. Um, the daily RSI does look a little bit nervous. In a position of strength for sure, bouncing, you know, getting above that 50, but you're not getting overbought. It would be nice to see you getting overbought. Um, continue growing is really, I like the volume. I like the, the bullish maneuvers here. Definitely nice to see from top to bottom here on this look. I would assume that you are going to see extensions actually. So, so that kind of, that that's nice. That kind of gives me a little bit of a hold on. We actually might close this week green. So again, that, that bearish call I was talking about just a second ago, that's if this week closes red. If we get that rejection off the 50, that's what it would start to look like. Just because I'm saying the price is going down does not mean I think it's a good time to sell. If price goes down, it's a good time to buy. There is a difference, okay? Um, but right now, looking at the daily, I would assume that we move up to about 80 to $85 potentially, maybe even higher than that. It is possible. Let's look at the four hour. Four hour looks nice, man. I really do like this four hour a lot. Um, yeah, you've got, let's see here, kind of like a double bottom on your closing lows. Again, not the wicks, but like where the bar is itself. And you have lower lows going here with a kind of like ascending low structure, if not like a flat structure. That is a form of hidden uh, bullish divergence. And you know you do have bearish divergence presenting itself. It is printed officially right now. Uh, but with with that being said, you kind of already had the move down with this, right? Your divergence formed between these two tops. You've already gone down this low. I think that that suffices. You could be moving up. Sometimes with these divergences, man, you'll you'll see. Um, oh, to be fair, actually, let's see here. To be fair, the divergence I suppose did happen all the way back here on this day, and you haven't technically fulfilled that yet if this were to be double bearish divergence um, rejecting off the overbought zone is not necessarily a good thing but you could you could continue to go higher hard to say i'm under the impression that you will go higher but let's see let's really see how this week closes out um that would be i think that'd be the most telling thing see how this week closes out if it closes red we can talk about the potential downside if it closes green the upside that I would expect would be somewhere around $80, right? Yeah, $88 at this 618 golden uh, ratio, 88 to $92, maybe $93 actually, somewhere around there. Um, 
by the end of the year, I think is completely possible, especially with this look. You got the rejection off the 3A2, bounce off the 236. Looks like you're rejecting now. This is why it would be very, very important to close this week green and continue to build. Because if you close red, it looks like you rejected twice off this 3A2. And I, I would genuinely expect that you could see either a retracement off of this zone, if not extensions. But we don't have that yet. So all the all the inter, intraday stuff, day to day stuff. Um, let's really wait to see how this week closes. I think I think that that's going to be key. And I know that that's not a big help right now. We do have four days and twenty hours left, but uh, that's really all I have, man. It's rather you're in a rather neutral position with your RSI. Could be potentially bearish. Could be potentially bullish. You are kind of neutral with a bullish tilt on your daily. Not a whole lot going there, right? Um, and you're being held down by previous areas of resistance without building up. So let's just see if you could continue to build. That'd be really nice to see. But let's move on to LTCN here. Um, Grayscale Trust here. It's phenomenal, man. You know, and I had, I think it was Miami Futures Trader. Maybe it was Richard V. Red Richard V. I forget. One, it was one of you that was asking what my realistic price targets are and a timeline for LTCN. So for that, and I'm assuming you mean throughout the whole uh, bull cycle. For that, we're going to look at this on a long-term perspective. Very nice. Love to talk about it every time. Very nice double bottom. Picture perfect. Double bottom. Literally right there. Um, you're, you're having this nice kind of like, right? You, you dropped just kind of selling off. And then you flattened out, very soft curve coming up. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. All the right things for uh, for a nice bullish trend to take place. And when I say nice, I mean it literally like this. Like it could be literally like this. It might be like this. And then with like moments of up, you know, stuff like that. Um, I would expect when you get into this zone, you will probably see like a, a straight up move to the upside, right? You do have this resistance here. Um, one, two, and support there. When you break that zone just as quickly as you came down, I would expect that you come up. You will probably see a phenomenal breakup so, or breakout to the upside. Um, until then, you might be climbing, right? Kind of keeping this like U shape. You might go parabolic, man. This is all the right formation for a parabolic structure. What do I think about the long term? From all time high to all time low, this is going to be one of the more significant fibs to base off of. If Litecoin Grayscale Trust, the LTCN chart, were to see new all-time highs, the minimum, unless it was a fake out, and it can be a fake out, just so you know, just because we go above here doesn't mean it's a breakout, right? If we if we go up there one week and then the next week we come down, that is a fake out, right? You need confirmation. It's very important. But if we do get that confirmation, if it does look like we are in fact going higher, um, the minimum price target would be at $2,300. The maximum kind of expected price target is at $15,611. And I know that sounds insane. Believe me, I know. But here's the deal, right? Some of you might say, well, that can't happen. Litecoin's not even going to see $10,000. Okay. To those of you that say that, the all-time high for LTCN is $510. Riddle me this. How come the all-time high for Litecoin is $420? It's $420. So $420, if we were to put like a, a price right there, That'd be like, it's not like significantly higher, but let's see, 420, something like that right there to the all time high. That's a 20% difference, right? If Litecoin was worth 420, this thing went up about 21% difference. Um, imagine if Litecoin was worth $2,000, you know, a 20% difference there could be, uh, what would that be? That would be $2,400, right? It's, it's still not that big of a disparity, but this this uh, premium price that it was, right? Because it was worth more than what, what it should have been worth. Um, based on the ratio to Litecoin, which is like 0.86 or something like that, right? Or 0.84, I forget what it is. Um, it could absolutely grow more than that. It could grow more than 20%. So if Litecoin was worth, like let's look at Litecoin real quick, because I do think Litecoin's going to break out to new all-time highs this cycle. I very much do. Um, if Litecoin all-time high is there, and then it's cycle low is here, we're building throughout this FIB structure. If it were to be worth at least about a thousand dollars, if not potentially two thousand five hundred dollars, um, I could very well see LTCN. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, I will say that that one six one eight extension does seem a little bit more crazy now. Unless Litecoin goes up a lot higher than that, but that'd be insane on the market cap valuation. Um, maybe this two thousand three hundred dollar level to five thousand forty six is more of an appropriate thing. So. This, I would say, you know, technically the 1618 is in the realm of expectations, but I might throw that out. That's a bit far-fetched. It's possible, sure, 
but it's a bit far-fetched. I think these are a little bit more realistic and even these seem insane, right? From a price of $9 going up to $2,300 to $5,000. Um, and when will that happen? Well, it's going to happen tomorrow. No, it's going to happen. It will probably not happen for a year and a half or so, right? A year and a half from now is going to be the middle of 2025. And it's expected that the, the crypto bull cycle is not going to be over until the latter half of 2025, potentially even the first quarter or maybe even the second quarter of 2026. But I, I personally think it's going to be that latter half the later part of 2025. So when will we see these prices? I would guess if I had to like really, really nitpick it, I would guess probably anywhere from September to December of 2025. That's that's my genuine um, thought behind that, right? Um, and that's all assuming again, if we achieve new all-time highs. If we achieve new all-time highs, the minimum target is here. Okay, And if Litecoin sees those prices, which I very much do think Litecoin itself will see prices above 2K, um, at least 1K, but probably above 2K, I would think that this makes sense, if not even prices up here. Again, the last time we had this premium like uh, difference from 420 to 510, that was a 20% difference, right? Uh, we could see a greater difference than that, a greater premium than that. But uh, all in all, big things for LTCN, big things for Litecoin. I do think that you know, with the fact that in the last cycle you were held down, by your previous all-time highs. This cycle, if you break above your, your previous all-time highs, which I think you will, um, I think that you will get above this line. And again, the minimum target would be well above $2,000 at $2,300. So moving on from there, um, that's all I got for LTCN. Maybe I could do some more, actually, some more like short-term analysis real quick, just, just real, real quick. Um, you are showing bearish divergence, okay? It's not confirmed. It is not, oh, no, it's not confirmed. It's not confirmed yet. But you do have it showing its head right now. High, lower, high, high, higher, high. Nice volume coming up. Love to see it, actually. You had a gap, but you filled it. Um, are you at an area of previous resistance? No, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. And then let's see here with this, maybe this high to low. And you can have this. LTCN is volatile, man. It's way more volatile. Crypto is volatile, but this stuff, these grayscale trusts are a lot more volatile when they want to be. Um, you're not really anywhere that would make sense to turn around, though you could. You absolutely could. I guess you're in the realm of expectations. You don't have to hit those lines. Uh, top to bottom here. Come on now. You actually went right up to the golden, uh, the golden retracement, the golden zone itself. So maybe you do turn around from here. Let's see how the how the week plays out with this as well. If we get some more red days, we will have that bearish divergence um, on the daily confirmed and printed. You are very overbought on your weekly RSI, but you could absolutely continue to go higher. You could go, you're at $9.39. You could go up to $12, maybe even up to $15, but I, I would probably stay more in this white zone for loading and unloading only. I think that would make sense. If you were to go above the 6.9 level, I think even going to this previous area of support to find it as resistance right there around $13 would make sense as well. But you very well could be turning around from the 6.18, you know. You, uh, it looks like you're showing respect on this FIB. You could come down to the 3.82 or the 0.5 for support and you know, a drop like that for LTCN would not mean the same. I think I think this thing can drop 42% and Litecoin itself could drop like 10%. You know, this is a lot more volatile. Um, and again, it kind of looks nice, right? With this like, like if you were to come down, like I, it kind of looks nice. But uh, that's, that's all I got for Litecoin and LTCN. So moving on from there, um, you know, these ones are going to take a while, guys, because uh, I am talking about two different things. And basically the same thing in itself. We're going to talk about Bitcoin Cash, BCH, USD. Shout out to the Dragon Riders in the House of the Dragon. Love Bitcoin Cash, man. It's um, one of my biggest bags. Um, it used to be my biggest bag, man. But right now I've got I've got interest in other places. Um, I'm not going to say it out loud. Okay, I'll say it. I, I actually hold a lot of Jesus coin. It wasn't my biggest bag before, man. It's not my biggest bag overall in investments uh, as far as like putting money goes, as putting money in goes. But uh it did a lot of growth, man. And whenever you have your smallest bag grow a lot, it can become your biggest bag. It's it's happened to me before. It's it's happening right now. So, uh, but uh, you know, whenever I do sell my Jesus coin, this this will probably be my biggest bag again. At the moment, it is my second biggest bag. But enough about me. Let's continue. Let's look at the price here. So, looking at this here, we're at 247.82. We are above the 236. It would be nice to close this week above the 236. Uh, weekly RSI looking very constructive. You're like in this upward channel, right? Where you have moments where you dip, moments where you rip, um, and then just moments where you're consolidating. I, I do think we're getting ready for a rip to the upside, um, but we, we could go down a little bit more, right? We, we, tipped, we tipped this green line 
the 123 moving average, we tipped it, we could come back down a little bit. I don't think that we're going to go below 210, below this low here. I don't, I don't think we're going to go down there anymore. We could. It is possible. Um, really, if we were to go lower, I would think that 200 level does, does hold the support. But uh, let's see on the weekly. With a move like this, man, with the volume we got, like I... I would expect we get some follow through. The, yesterday we went down and then we came up. I would expect that we get some follow through. That's kind of my my opinion right now. Lower lows in the RSI, higher lows in the price, flat top, like kind of a horizontal channel. I, I personally would expect we continue to go higher. Where are we gonna go? Probably to that $300 level in a very short amount of time. That's, that's my thoughts, honestly, on Bitcoin Cash. Um, one hour here. A little bit of a double top on the one hour, maybe in the more like immediate, immediate term time frames we go down. Maybe by the time most of you watch this video or, or this part of the video, it'll be down a little bit, but not by much. You know, we're at 247. I doubt, I doubt we go below 238. If we do go below 238, we might be making a move down to like 220 or maybe even to that 200 level. It is possible. Uh, this could be a fake out, but but I don't think it is, man. I don't think. I think actually we found support on the 236 yesterday is what we did, right? Yeah, a little bit. Um, anyways, I like Bitcoin Cash. I think it's getting ready to make a move up above $300 and probably even well past that. I think by the end of the, the year, prices above 400 even above 500 are still completely possible. Um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on this, man. Breaking above the screen line will be a really big deal. A really, really big deal. Um, at least I think it will. Hopefully it will. You know, when we broke below it onto the downside, it was a big deal. Consolidated and then more of a big deal. When we broke above it, we were we were held down by it. We wicked above it, but when we were held down, when we broke above it, big deal to the upside, right? So um, I'm, I would expect similar results. Uh, I do like the weekly RSI a lot. This is what gives me faith that if we drop, it's not going to be significant because this this weekly RSI, man, it just looks it looks very, very strong. Very, very strong. I'd love to see this week close above the 60, but I die test. Let's move on to BCHG here. Um, looking at this here, you know, some volatility for sure. Bitcoin Cash is weak, does not look like this, uh, where BCHG's does. BCHG is up a lot more this week. We're up 28% on this. A lot of volume coming in, strong readings for sure. I like the weekly RSI as well. You are a little bit overbought, you're a little hot, kind of at an area that you found. No, I guess not, you're, you, you could go higher. Um, on the daily, yeah. Red day to day with a lot of volume, but who cares? I, I mean, I think that it, it could, to be fair, it could come back down and then come back up. You know, this, this again, this, the volatility with these things is a lot higher than it is with uh, just the regular cryptocurrencies. Um, I do like the daily RSI a lot. I'm gonna get rid of the brush here. Come on now. Um, you could, you could be right now looking to bounce around your overbought zone and then go up more, form some bearish divergence, and then turn around. I do think that this is probably gonna come to an end. It might have already seen its peak. Let's see here, top to bottom. Went up to the 1414. You, you could go up higher, but don't be surprised if we close this gap. We see a bounce off the 886 area right at about $2.45, um, sitting right now at $3.20. We absolutely could see that. Bitcoin Cash itself might drop 5% or something, and that could be enough to send us all the way back down, right? So, and that comes in line with this kind of like line of uh, support that we've got here. I didn't draw it appropriately, like too, too well, but you see, you see what I'm trying to do, right? Comes right in line with that and the 886. Finding a rejection off of these extended areas and then bouncing off your 886 to your 100 level, very common maneuver. And then if you get that, you probably would get that, you will see deeper extensions than, than where you were. So I would think at least 457, 576 by the end of the year, by the end of this month. That's that's my expectations for BCHG. This thing can move fast, it likes to move fast, um, and it definitely broke out. It looks To me, it looks like it broke out. Let's see how this week closes. Again, with a lot of these, let's see how this week closes. But right now, I feel pretty confident that, that it broke out. Um, you know, uh, real quick, I'll, I'll touch back. I guess we can talk about this now, actually. Um, M hat wanted me to talk about how GBTC, right? If we're looking at BCHG, it's, it's going up. We look at GBTC real quick. We'll come back to GBTC. I know I said I'd talk about ETH next, but, but, uh, I don't know, man, it's up 10%, but then Bitcoin, Bitcoin itself is up. 10% this week, right? So so they're pretty similar. They're like in unison with each other where Bitcoin Cash itself is up only 7% this week, yet BCHG is up uh, a lot more. 
and what my thoughts are on that volatility, if, if any of that makes sense, right? So let me try to phrase this better. Bitcoin is moving in unison with the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, right? Bitcoin Cash actually had a bit of a stifle yesterday, right? It had a red day and BCHG was just on a straight terror, man. It went it went up. It did close the day red, to be completely fair. Bitcoin Cash closed the day 1% red or so. This closed the day a lot more red, but it did have a run up. Um, you know, that request might have been before it turned around. I don't know. But, but my thoughts are, man, Bitcoin Cash, BCHG, lower market caps, easier to fluctuate. That's my thoughts, right? GBTC, Versus Bitcoin moving in unison. I mean, I would expect that GBTC does move up more over time, um, but you know, sometimes weird things happen. These, as as much as people want to believe that Bitcoin Cash and BCHG are 100% correlated, they're not. They can do different things, right? And I mean, just prime example, this chart right here does not look anything like we we broke out to new yearly highs already. The BCH chart, we're still well below our our yearly highs. So. They can do different things, and the reason why this will do different things is there's less, there's more money. There's not a market cap for BCHG, right? But there's more money in Bitcoin Cash than there is in BCHG. With more money comes harder to move prices. With less money comes easier to move prices, and that's that's why I think we're seeing this immense volatility right now. Where with Bitcoin Cash, it's a little bit more tame, but Bitcoin Cash itself is just volatile as hell, anyways. But uh, let's move on to Ethereum. We'll come back to the GBTC BTC pairing. I hope I hope that answered your question, M Hat. Um, it's kind of difficult, I feel like, to answer, but but I, I hope that that was it. Um, Ethereum here. Haven't talked about Ethereum in a while, but man, what what a show it's been putting on, man. You're up at your 1618, finding a little bit of turbulence. You got a tweezer top going on. I would be careful, guys. Um, definitely be careful. You are overbought in an area that you've kind of like found resistance before. Yes, yes. Let's go back in time. Let's take a little walk in time. You could go a little higher, a little bit higher, but resistance in this area, resistance in this area, a little bit kind of close in this area, resistance in this area, close, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it could happen. We could turn around right here. Um, absolutely, we could. Hit the 1618, closed right at it. Now we're turning around. Tweezer top. It looks perfect, man. Um, nice volume increase as you're moving up. You do have bearish divergence, though. Right? High here. Not really bearish divergence there, but maybe like from this high to this high, bearish divergence. Right? And you do have the low here and the lower low. Uh, it's... I. I would say you could be turning around Ethereum. You could be turning around. And maybe all, maybe that's good for altcoins. Maybe it's bad for altcoins. I don't know. Everybody thinks that just because Ethereum goes down that it's bad for altcoins. Sometimes it has that Bitcoin effect where when, when Ethereum's stagnant, whenever it's going down, altcoins run. Sometimes that happens. It's, it's more common that what's good for ETH is good for altcoins and what's bad for ETH is bad for altcoins. But... Uh, you know, nothing's, nothing's a guarantee every time, right? I do like this relationship you're having with your green line. Um, you are well above the green line here. It is aiming upwards though. You know, seeing a little bit of a common retracement wouldn't be too much to like be upset about. Man, you didn't even hit your three. This is strong, man. This is really, really, really strong. Um, yeah, you're sitting at 2,275 right now. You absolutely could pull back to that uh, $2,100 level. I don't think you'll go to $2,000. Maybe you wick a little bit below it. I mean, you could go to 2000 but I don't think you break it. But you could wick a little bit below it. But overall, I would expect that you hold this line as you did before. Previous area of resistance, it was a shelf for so long. I would bet you find some turbulence there if you were trying to make a move down. You could be going up more. I want to look at the weekly RSI again. Very strong RSI. Very, very strong for sure. At an area that you turned around before, but if you were to turn around, you would actually turn around here. If like this week was to close red, right, it would be here, which you have turned around there before too. Very, very strong RSI though, man. I don't know if you do turn around. Let's let's look at a grand, a more macro fib, actually. Let's see. Top to bottom, right here. I mean, yeah. You could go lower. Let's look at the one. I want to look at the 123 RSI real, real quick. Inputs, 123. You are above your 50, and you're breaking the green line. This could be big shit, you guys. This could actually be very big shit. You were held down by it before. Again, when you you found support, but then you broke it. Big shit to the downside. Um, found resistance when you broke it. Big shit to the upside, right? Resistance. You definitely show significance on the 123. Um, 
you know, 123 weeks too, by the way, that's like two and a half years of, uh, of price data. That's like the average, right? Because there's 52 weeks in a year, 52, 104. So 123, like that, that's almost a half year right there in weeks times. Uh, that might be why you're seeing significance, you know. Um, maybe it is relevant to the like the two and a half year. Maybe 123 isn't 100% accurate, but I, but I do like this line for for many reasons, man. It, it corresponds with a lot of time frames. But being above the 50, bouncing off the 50 even, and getting above your green line like this, I I would expect you're about to see some fireworks actually. And maybe you do pull down in the in the immediate term, the more short term. Like maybe it could be this week or next week. Uh, you pull back to like that 2,100 level. Test this. You broke out. Test your previous area of breakout as support, confirm it, and then you're up to the golden zone at least. And I think that that could happen by the end of the year. You could see a 2,500, maybe even a 2,800 Ethereum by the end of the year. If not by the end of the year, sometime before the halving for sure, probably in January. Um, and it, it absolutely could go higher, man. This break above the green line is uh, it's it's no joke. No joke at all. You could go all the way up to like $3,500 previous area of resistance here, maybe even up to the 786 at $3,300, something like that. Definitely higher targets in mind um, over the coming weeks, even the coming like month or so. Uh, I do like this chart, man. It looks really nice. Let me look at the, uh, the short-term RSI. Oh, I got my brush on. Let's see. Bring it back. Yes, I use the 10. I don't hide it. That's that's what I use. Um, yeah, it looks like bearish divergence, and it is printed. It's not confirmed, but if you keep climbing, like that's all it would take, really. You don't have to go that much lower. You know, you don't have to go to 2100. But with this look, I would think you would at least come back, probably to that. You know, you drop like from here, like 40 bucks. Not not too much, right? At least there, probably a little pullback, but then you continue going higher. Yeah. I like that actually. But but again, guys, don't be too concerned if you pull back lower than that. I would very much expect that you'd hold support there. But there's probably a lot of people who feel like they missed the boat, so you might not even get that chance to buy down here. It, it might it might hold the lows on the uh, the trend it's going to. So that's Ethereum. Bullish on it overall. Maybe in the very immediate term, a little bit bearish. But in the more like short term to mid term time frames, bullish. Before the halving, definitely bullish. And I'm sure it will have a pullback before the halving too, but not before it sees prices above $2,500. Potentially even up to 35. That's a $1,000 range, guys. Like that before the halving could absolutely happen. And then by the end of the cycle, who knows where this thing's going to be, man? It's going to be a lot higher. Um, but let's talk about ETH, ETH E on the grayscale trust real quick. It broke out as well up. Up two percent today. What's what's what is it on the weekly? Up eight percent, eight point seven, and then you're up on this week. You are up three point seven two. Okay, so yeah, it's it's a little bit of a multiplier. Nice to see. Um, definitely a breakout. You're above your green line there, man. I love to see. It. Yeah, you you definitely broke out. Um, Again, if you pull back, don't be surprised. You're at 1860 right now. You could pull back to like 1750, maybe even down to like 1670, something like that. Um, previous areas of support, previous areas of support. Um, I doubt you would go too much lower though, right? Look at that. You check this as support. It's that. It's that over here. It's this this area of resistance. Beautiful to see. I think you're getting ready to do some good things, man. This uh, this is definitely encouraging. Um, looking at the weekly RSI, the short term RSI. You are overbought, but you could make another stride higher. You might you might have your like final climb right here, form some bearish divergence. Maybe you actually get like bullish convergence, and then you roll over, and maybe you stay in this range still, and then you make another drive, and then you actually form some bearish divergence, something like that. Um, I would think you have a little bit more in you on a weekly basis. So where do you go? You're at 1860 right now. You probably make a move up to $27, maybe even higher than that, maybe up to like $30. It's totally possible, man. By the end of this month, like in a very, very short amount of time, Top to bottom here, you're almost at that 618. 69 is right there at 23, 786 all the way up there at 28. So I, I do think you have higher to go. I do think you have higher to go. If you go down, it's going to be small and it's going to be very brief. It's going to happen like rather immediately. Um, and if you go up, the downside possibilities could be a little bit more sustained, but at that point you'd be coming down from higher prices. Therefore, you'd probably find a low around where we are now. I hope that makes sense. Um, previous areas of support back here in this little range here and at your 618, right? That's why I'm saying around here. Um, overbought, 
you tend to show strength in the overbought zone, right? That's why it's that's why it's called the RSI, it's the relative strength index. So I would think that being at the strongest readings that you're in, you would probably uh, show some strength, right? Some more strength. Um, let's see. Top to bottom here. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think you go up a little bit more for sure. Looking at the daily. Lower lows in the RSI, higher, yeah. This this daily RSI cooled off. You're about to get overbought. You're, I think you're good, man. I think it's really. This actually speaks very well to what I was saying about Ethereum on like the spot price. Maybe like this hour, this day, we see a little bit of a pullback, but we probably continue to go higher. And then from there, you know, maybe we pull back to this area of resistance. But but again, maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. For ETH, that'd be 2100. Um, I like this RSI a lot, man. This makes me think that you do, you have a lot more to go. You're at $18 at least. I mean, I would think at least like around 23, but you could go up to 28, man, in no time. No time at all. Um, where do I think this thing's going to be by the end of the cycle? Oh, man, I didn't even give that for BCHG. We're going to have to go back and do that. I got I got carried away with my thoughts. Um, we'll go back and do that, man. Top to bottom here. By the end of the cycle, you could be worth maybe $90 to $199, potentially even higher than that. Um, you know, that's that's like the the realm of expectations there. If you break to new all-time highs, probably. Um, if we were to take this as like the all-time high and then go to the low there, those prices could be even higher, right? Potentially up to $535. That's, that's possible for Ethereum, man. Um, but I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I don't know what the, what the ratio is for these ones here, but all in all, I'd say keep it conservative. Probably around ninety dollars to two hundred dollars is what I would think, and if not higher, good surprise. You know, not not a bad surprise. I want to look at this real quick though. Bottom to top, look at that shit, man. Found support on your seven eight six. All the more reason why you might go to twenty eight dollars, man. That's where that seven eight six was. Um, yeah, and in fact, generally speaking, whenever you come up like this from the bottom, you're coming up to your two three six. Like this, after you've like found support on your 618 like this, I would expect that you break above it and then find it as support before you climb higher, right? And if you break above it, what's above it? That $28 area, previous area of resistance, previous area of resistance. Um, I really like this, man. I really do like this this little bounce off the 786 there um, with a bullish engulfing candle to boot. But looking at that there, um, we're going to do BTC. Let's Let's do BCHG real quick. I'll have to like throw this in the timestamp as well. Be like BCHG mess up on predictions. Um, maybe I did throw it in there. I don't remember if I did. If I did, oh, I did, man. I absolutely did. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I promise you, I'm, I'm not high. I'm sober. I, you know, yeah. Uh, but I totally spaced that. Yeah, because I remember talking about this not being likely, but these probably being more um, possible. Yeah, right. Or no. Was it that? I can't, maybe that was for Litecoin, man. Was it for Litecoin? I'm getting all, this is gonna, I'm gonna put this in the timestamp as Caesar gets confused as hell. Maybe it was Litecoin. Yeah, cause that's all the way up at 15,000. See, that's where I was getting confused. 15,000 there on BCHG, you got 1,500. That's where I was getting confused. You could see 1,500 for BCHG, man. Um, you know, I think, I think, let's see, if, Bitcoin Cash was to do a 100x from its current price, which sounds crazy, but it could, you guys. It very well could this cycle. I actually think it could see prices above 20K this cycle. Um, you absolutely could see prices that would be 100x from here, which would be $300, right? Or more, right? If BCH does 100x, BCHG is going to do more. So that, that $527, $250 area, I think that, that that sounds about right. Again, maybe the 1618 is a little bit far-fetched, but yeah. Um, anyways, enough of the confusion. Let's wrap this bad boy up talking about Bitcoin, the Mac Daddy itself, man. Some people might not call this Bitcoin. It might be the poser Bitcoin. Some people with the Bitcoin Cash community would say that this this is the uh, it's like the Ethereum classic, right? And before I get started, you know, I think Bitcoin, this BTC, is the real Bitcoin personally. I like Bitcoin Cash more. I think it has more growth potential and it's a better Bitcoin. Um, but this is the real Bitcoin, right? It's what the communities recognize as the real Bitcoin. Um, we can disagree if you want, but I do agree with this kind of state of thought that Ethereum Classic is to Bitcoin as Bitcoin Cash 
is to Ethereum because Ethereum, right? Ethereum Classic hard forked. It used to be Ethereum, and then the old Ethereum remained as Ethereum Classic. The new hard fork is what we recognize as Ethereum. Well, the new hard fork for Bitcoin was Bitcoin Cash, but we don't call it Bitcoin anymore, right? Bitcoin in that respect would be the Ethereum Classic. Bitcoin Cash would actually be the Ethereum. And the reason why Ethereum stuck, it got the name, the new Ethereum got the name, kept the name, is because the community moved over. Most of the community moved over. Where with Bitcoin BCH, the community was split, but still most of the community in crypto recognized BTC as the uh, as Bitcoin. But that's where that's where you get people like Roger Veer or other people talking about Bitcoin Cash being the real Bitcoin. They're not trying to scam you. They like to them. They truly believe that it is the real Bitcoin. And to me, it's the better Bitcoin. I, I don't know if it's I don't know what the real Bitcoin is, man. I could see BCH giving BTC a run for its money. I guess I recognize Bitcoin as the real Bitcoin. BTC is the real Bitcoin. But I can see why people are so passionate about this, right? And I'm not trying to dog on anybody. I hope nobody's trying to dog on me, right? Um, but for anybody that just discounts Bitcoin Cash because they think it's some scam coin that that wants to be Bitcoin. It doesn't want to be Bitcoin. To some people, it is Bitcoin. And in fact, it's it, it doesn't want to be BTC. It does want to be Bitcoin, but it doesn't want to be BTC. It wants to be what they believe is like closer to the, the true Bitcoin. But I digest, man. We're here to talk about technicals, not about people's opinions. I love this monthly bounce off the 50, right? We kind of went a little bit below it, but we, we got right back above it as soon as we were up above it. I don't know what you're doing over there, but you better stop. Um, that's my cat. Um, man, they are shitheads. But top to bottom here, we are above the 618. Guys, this is beautiful. What's really beautiful about this is the fact that this was the first attempt. The first attempt at the 618, and we broke through it like butter like butter. There's a set of rules that comes with fibs whenever you do this. Whenever you break through your 618 like butter on the first attempt, assuming within the next 25 days and 20 hours we don't reject, right? A wick above doesn't count. If we if we close below, uh, what would that be? That would be 38,000. If we close below about 38,600 this month, then this changes. But as long as we're closing above it, I think we're in the clear. The rules go like this, cut through it cut through it like butter on the first attempt, and the odds of you seeing extensions like this are like very, very likely. They're like 70, 80, maybe even more uh, as far as like likelihood goes <clears throat> in my experience. And especially on the first attempt, this 1618 becomes all the more likely. Like generally speaking, positive reaction with this, you do look for the 1272, the 1414, um, and that 1272, the minimum extension is right there at a psychological level of 100K. But seeing this 1618 up here, man, I, I mean, you guys know, if you've been following the channel, I have higher aspirations for Bitcoin uh, than this. I actually think we're gonna see this 2272. And with a strong reaction on the first time like this, I think that that adds to the validity of the idea that we could in fact see deeper extensions. We absolutely could. But let's keep it grounded for now, right? These are the realms of expectations. I do think that we will see a six-figure Bitcoin by the end of this cycle. I, I think it's all but certain at this point in time, or it's all but uh, happened. I don't know what to, what to say. It's pretty certain, in my opinion. None of this financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't predict the future. Or I can predict the future. I just don't. It's a prediction, right? But like, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen. I don't. I don't know the future. Um, it's just predictions based off of historical data and technical analysis. Um, <clears throat> but I die test, man. I die test. Some people think. We're going to see the top right here. We're going to form our all-time high. We're going to get a double top like like we did with Litecoin or some other coins. Um, I don't think that's it, man. I think this cycle is It's going to be, I actually believe, with a very high degree of confidence that we're going to see a stronger cycle than we did last cycle. Last cycle, we had COVID. Last cycle, we had the DXY popping off, um, finding its lows and starting to expand while we were at our highs. 2100% from low to high. Well, if we did 2100% from low to high here, that would put us at a minimum above 300K. And we're floating in the middle of nowhere with our with our fibs. So I would think that it would go up to the 2272. And you know, I'm I'm going I'm I'm going on the long term game here. I made my last Bitcoin video about this, but if we take the top to bottom here, right, the first all time high, really, like from like a cycle basis, all time high to low, 2272 extension. Okay. All time high here to this cycle low, if I can get it. Come on, I let it go. There we go. 2272 extension. 
The one time that we did not was this last cycle and we still saw a 1618 extension. We actually double topped it, right? Um, you can see orange line here, 1618, that's where we double topped. Okay. If COVID didn't happen, if the FTX collapse didn't happen, if the dollar wasn't pumping, like whatever, if Joe Biden didn't get elected president, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying Donald Trump had to get elected president, but I, I would definitely think that things would have probably been better off if he was voted for instead of uh, Biden. But, uh, you know, if, if anyone but Biden really was voted president, who, who knows? Who knows what kind of economical uh, situations, happenings, causes? We had the Russia-Ukraine war, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, who knows why this topped off? I think it was because, you know, of, of a bunch of different factors. But if we didn't have those factors going on, who knows how high it would have gone, right? But that was the one time we saw the 1618 extension. We fell short of the 2272. Things are different now, right? We're talking about quantitative easing coming back for Bitcoin. We're talking about, you know, a new presidential candidate being elected potentially, right? It is an election year. Things tend to do well in election years because they want, you know, the president wants to remain in power or whatever. Um, but, you know, things things are definitely looking better. Inflation's at lower levels, right? Risk risk on assets are becoming more of a thing. Um, we absolutely could see a 2272 extension. That's all That's all I'm trying to say, man. I got lost in the translation because I'm very convinced of this. For anybody that's made it this far, you're probably loving Bitcoin because, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to do well, man. It's going to do well. I think it's going to be above 400K. We are very hot in the more immediate term. We're very hot in the RSI right now, but we've gone higher. We've definitely gone higher, but we're at the realm. We're in the area where we could turn around, guys. We've hit that, right? My whole argument before was, being down here, yeah, we've turned around before, but like we turned around twice at lower levels. I would think we would at least go up to here, like literally maybe even actually a little bit higher. This is what leads me to believe that we can go higher throughout this week, maybe see the RSI get into the 90s. We did break above the 618. We went straight to the 69 even. We could go all the way up to the 786. This is higher than I've ever predicted that we would be by the end of this year. I personally didn't think we'd break 48K by the end of this year. Um, but it's starting to look like we could go to the 786. We could go to $50,000. And before, a lot of people want to compare what we're doing now to what we saw in last cycle before COVID. From top to bottom, we went all the way up to the 786. Straight line, right? We didn't do a straight line this time. We went up, consolidated, went up, consolidated, faked out, consolidated more. Grand accumulation phase here. And then now we're expanding, you know. Um, we could absolutely go up to 50K from here. It, by the end of the year, by the end of the year, it could be, it could happen. That is, you know, if, if we close this week above here, which we're at right now, if we close this week at these current levels or higher, we absolutely could see prices at 50K, maybe even higher. But I, I think that that, I think that in itself will provide a lot of resistance along with the fact that the RSI will be in the zone. It's already kind of in that zone, but it'll be more of like in the zone of like where it has found resistance more often. Right. So, um, but you are at that area nonetheless. So let's see where the week, either way, I would expect the week closes around here, if not higher. We do have four days, 20 hours left. Um, very, very bullish things for Bitcoin, man. Very bullish things for crypto. Love to see it. Um, broke its green line a while ago. It's been on ever since, right? A little bit of stagnation for a couple weeks, but basically it looks like a straight line whenever, whenever you zoom out. Looking at the daily here. Yeah, you're hot. I don't think you have any uh, bearish divergence forming. It'd be nice to see a little bit more volume come in. Um, you could come down. Maybe over the next like couple days you could come down. But I still have faith that you could close this week a little bit higher. Yeah, very strong four-hour RSI. Very strong daily. Bounce off the 50, man. Love to see it. Um, you could come down, maybe find support somewhere in your overbought zone and then move up like you did last time, right? You tend to do that. Whenever you get, whenever you start moving down from your overbought zone, you don't just go like straight down normally. Um, it does happen like right here, I suppose, or I guess right here, right? It does happen, but it's not as common, right? You generally do get stuff like this where you, these little things, what that means is like higher movements, right? You look at this here, you topped off and then you went a little bit higher, just a little bit, but you went higher nonetheless. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I got for Bitcoin. Let's move on to BCHG to wrap this bad boy up, the Grayscale Trust. Um, red day yesterday, kind of looks like, oh, BCH, I'm sorry, GBTC. GBTC, I was like, just like Bitcoin Cash, because it is Bitcoin Cash. There we go, green day, up 4%. Looks like a breakout, looks like it had a flat top here, breaking out, volumes increasing, love to see it. Very strong RSI, you just got into the overbought zone. I bet it once more. That lines up with Bitcoin as well. Um, man, Bitcoin trust is basically at that it's already at that like 50k level 
um, where Bitcoin would be, right? Like the in the equivalence, if you look at this move down here, we go to BTC, um, right? 50K is all the way up here. We're on GBTC. We're already beyond that. So bullish, very, very bullish. Um, top to bottom. Hmm. Yeah, man. First pass. I think it's on to $100 or more, man. GBTC is going to be worth $100 or more um, sometime next year, sometime in 2024. I would even think I would, if I had to bet money on it, uh, I don't know. I want to say in the first half, but it might be the second half. Just like kind of thinking about everything that goes on, right? Like I... From the same kind of dynamic that we have going here, I would think that GBTC breaks its all-time highs before Bitcoin does. But I don't think Bitcoin's going to break its all-time highs until the latter half, the later part, probably August, September, or later um, of 2024. So maybe maybe it is the second half that we see prices above $100. But nonetheless, you're at 35 now. You could probably, if Bitcoin turns around at its 786, I bet this thing can go up to its 886. Maybe go to $45, another bit of uh, growth. And then you come down. Um, definitely a bullish looking chart, man. Very, very bullish. Um, if you were in like a channel upwards, right? You kind of are at the top end of this channel. Maybe not. Maybe a little bit more to go, but more or less like at the top ends of it. Um, you could come back down, find a little bit of support in a previous area of support. If you were to go up to like $45 and then come all the way back down to $23, don't be scared. It's, this thing's volatile. It's more volatile than Bitcoin, right? It would give people an opportunity to buy. But uh, I don't know, man. When this thing moves up, it looks like it doesn't like to pull back too, too much. When it pulls back, it like really means it. So so who knows? It might, it might not pull back that low. But uh, maybe it breaks up higher and then it finds support on previous resistance, not previous support. But, but who knows? I like the weekly RSI. Very strong, overbought for a while now. Very strong. Wow. Yeah, you could go higher, but you're at an area where it would make sense to turn around on a weekly basis a little bit. Um, daily RSI, ooh, you got some bearish divergence for me, man. That is some hard bearish divergence right there. I like the RSI, it looks strong, but let's just see here. Let's analyze this a little bit more. I don't know, man. I don't know. This would kind of signal an impending drop, actually. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know, man. To be fair, you are higher than this high, though. Overall, it does look like a straight line. You know what I bet, man? It's, it's going to scare people. It's going to make people think we have bearish divergence. But as it just continues to climb, um, whenever we take that out, it'll be irrefutable that there's no more bearish divergence. Probably. Because sometimes you get this just because it's printed. It looks like it now, but you don't even have it printed. It's not even confirmed. It's presenting itself. It'll be printed when you have a red day. When you have two red days or three red days, it'll be confirmed depending on how the price action works, right? If it's like a very neutral red day, that might not count. Um, but let's just see. I don't know. This this does have me a little bit worried, but the fact that you just broke out two days ago, volume's increasing. I kind of like it, man. I kind of like it for more upside. So that's all I got for you guys, man. I don't know if I have anything else to say. Bullish on basically everything. Everything looks super good. If it is to come down, it's not going to be by much. Um, that's my thoughts, you know, short of like a general, like overall crypto drop happening, which could happen in December. I feel like a lot of people are expecting that. I was expecting that before December hit, but I hear it everywhere. Everybody's expecting a December drop and we are just so bullish right now, guys. Like it might be January. January might be when the drop happens um, is what I'm starting to think because everything just looks so bullish right now. It is the beginning of the month. We have a lot of time for things to develop. So uh, we'll just keep talking about this day to day, but I hope you liked the video. If you did hit that like button, subscribe if you'd like to see more and feel free to leave requests guys. I'm, I'm very open to doing requests. Thank you all for coming. Have a good night. Good day. Good afternoon. Goodbye.